Joseph Smith, the founder of Mormonism, was a trialed and convicted con man. His trick was to convince the credulous to part with their money in the name of gold digging missions, secret treasures by the defeated, the genocided Native American culture. There were those who claimed to follow the evidence at the time, to seek out treasure based on actual knowledge. And there were a great many people who claimed to use certain magical powers. Joseph Smith belonged to both groups, claiming to have knowledge and also claiming to have necromantic powers. He was found to be a disorderly person and a con man, as well as disturbing the peace. Yet only a few years later, he would found Mormonism. Joseph Smith was visited by the angel Moroni on three occasions and told there were gold plates on which were written the accounts of the lost Jewish tribe that came to America. The idea of the Book of Mormon is that it fills in the gaps after the New Testament and therefore they can say of their religion that it's a restoration of the true Christianity. Even though he was an intelligent man, and able to express a story, he needed to have some kind of scribe, someone to write it down for him. Initially that was his wife Emma, and then a neighbour, Martin Harris. Martin Harris's wife, not convinced by this story, stole the first 200 pages of the Book of Mormon. She insisted that if Joseph Smith was genuine, he could reproduce those pages with ease. And it's understandable that people would have their doubts. You had Martin Harris on the other side of a sheet, so he could not look at the prophet and could not look at the tablets. And he was told if he dared look at the prophet, if he dared try to look at the golden tablets, he would be struck down by God himself. So when Martin Harris's wife basically rejects this kind of story as probable nonsense from a known con man, is it any wonder? However, being a good storyteller, Joseph Smith had an answer. He said that those 200 pages could be in the devil's hands by now. And so, to ensure that the gospel came out as it should, he could read from a very similar book about the same story. And so he had an excuse, which fooled Martin, that he was indeed legitimate as a prophet passing on the message from the golden plate to the Book of Mormon. Elohim, the Mormon understanding of God. The idea is quite different from that of conventional Christianity and indeed many conventional religions. The idea is that God is an exalted, perfected man. He has a physical body and there is more than one God. And that human beings, by following the true path of Mormonism, can become like God, although they still have a version of the Trinity. They have God the Father, also called Elohim. They have Jesus Christ, who is also the Jehovah of the Old Testament. And they have the Holy Ghost. Now even though the idea of the Mormon God, Elohim, is one of a physical God, with a physical body, this doesn't limit his ability, since the Holy Ghost is everywhere and in all things, thus enabling God's influence to be everywhere. A lost Jewish tribe came to America. Mormons are taught to believe that the Book of Mormon comes from those American Jews. A lost tribe of Israel that came to America, there was a combat between the two major factions. Those of pale skin, who are pure and bright, and those who had fallen from grace. These white American Jews were eventually wiped out, hiding the golden plates of the Book of Mormon before they were eventually wiped out. And those Jews who were cursed with darkened skin, who were no longer pure, no longer followed the way of Elohim, they became the Native American tribes. Mormonism and black people. They considered those of darker skin and those with the darkest skin to be 
the accursed people, and those with the light skin, those who are white European, to basically be the purest. They thought against anti-slavery legislation. They even questioned civil rights for black Americans. Yet over time, they changed their ways according to the times because their leaders had revelations. Meaning that when the leader of the Mormons, whether it's a modern day president or one of their previous prophets, had the need to do so, could simply say, God's given me a revelation, and he now says, black people are in fact human. At one point in Mormonism, in relatively recent history, you are not allowed to be a deacon, a priest, hold any official role. You are basically simply allowed to be part of the congregation. That's now fully changed, and Mormonism fully accepts black people as being both human and worthy members of their religion. Polygamy, a somewhat similar story to that of racism, is the polygamy belief held by some Mormons. It was held very strongly in its early history, especially when Joseph Smith had a revelation so he could have yet another wife. But when Utah was going to join the United States, the United States said, we can accept your bigotry, we can accept your racism, we can accept your prejudice, but we're not going to accept polygamy. So the leaders of Mormonism had another revelation, in this case to do with dropping polygamy. One of the reasons they can do this is because of the idea that God speaks to everyone. So therefore God can give you a revelation. You don't have to be Joseph Smith. However, over the years, every time the main organisation of Mormonism changes a particular point of view, whether it's polygamy, it's view on black people, and various other ideas to do with the Mormon faith, you end up with someone who decides we need a traditionalist sect. And so you end up with an offshoot. And that's why you have fundamentalist Latter-day Saints who believe in polygamy, underage marriage, even underage sex, and many other things that are repugnant to the average Mormon. Missionary work. All young Latter-day Saint men are expected to serve as missions. They're expected to serve as a full-time missionary for two years. They don't choose where they're going to serve or the language in which they'll have to preach. They don't receive any economic help from Mormonism itself. They're expected to fund it themselves, their own mission work for two years, as well as receiving aid from their family. They must be 18, but no older than 25. They should not yet be married. They should have completed their secondary school and meet certain criteria for physical fitness and spiritual worthiness. Missionary service is not compulsory, nor is it required for young men to retain their church membership. However, rules for women are different. Where they're allowed to go for a shorter period, there is no upper echelon for the age limit. So it can simply be a personal choice on the part of a woman to be a mission, providing she's over the age of 19. They're opposed to marriage equality. The church itself is fully opposed to the idea of homosexuality in men and women. They're against marriage equality and equal rights. They accept the right of people to identify as being gay, as being a lesbian, as being bisexual. However, their church says practicing any sexual act which does not fit with their view of God is contrary to God's will. So basically, if you practice any form of of sex or love with a potential partner that means you're basically going against the will of God according to Mormonism. The Mormon church has previously backed the idea that homosexuality is a mental illness. Yet just as they've changed their views on polygamy, on racism and other issues, a revelation is surely due. Considering how they've changed their minds in the past, it's only a matter of time before they accept homosexuality and eventually gay marriage, as well as transgenderism and other relating issues. 
Baptizing the dead. Mormons have a belief that it's not simply that once you're dead, you're dead. You're condemned to all eternity to suffer if you didn't fulfill your destiny. Instead, you can be missioned to even after death. They believe by symbolically baptizing you post-death with a picture or simply your name can be enough to ensure that Mormons in the afterlife can reach you and help to correct your mistakes. The idea is that you didn't die a good Mormon. Therefore, they're going to symbolically baptize you by saying your name. So then you can be missioned to by Mormon missions in the afterlife and so be saved. However, this belief in baptizing the dead has gotten them into trouble in the past. In the name of doing good, they try and collect as many names as they can. People who've died in wars, and of course the names of the people who died in the Holocaust, for example. However, if you don't believe in these baptisms of the dead, or indeed any baptisms, then what harm is actually done? In conclusion, Mormonism is a bizarre belief, with bizarre ideas, an obvious fabrication, with obvious alterations, founded by a con man, passed on by people who are willing to change the religion massively to make it more legally acceptable, and over time may well become simply another version of moderate Christianity.